So unlike carving, which is a subtractive technique, the additive technique involves adding product one movement at a time. So here we have a Tibetan monk who is creating a clay model of Buddha and he is taking balls of clay that, are, that he's wetting and he's slowly adding it to a base and building it from the bottom to the top until he completes his work. And usually something that is of an additive technique needs something within it that is structurally sound, that will help hold it up. And this is called an armature. Here we see an artist who's created a wire skeleton and has started to add Play-Doh or some other material to start to build this human figure up. An armature can be made from sticks, wire, anything that's structurally solid and can bear some weight. This particular artwork is called a combine and is created by Robert Rauschenberg and what he's done is he's taken objects that are not necessarily common but objects that generally we can recognize and understand. We've got a painting at the bottom and on top of that is a goat and the tire of a car. And what he's done is he's actually combined them in such a way to create a very strange object that is new and a little bit confusing. And if you're wondering what's on the face, the, uh, he actually painted the face of the goat there. Klaus Oldenburg definitely had a sense of humor. He liked to play with what he called appropriations, which were objects from everyday life. But he manipulated them in such a way that they became extraordinary. So in this instance, we have a super large box of matches and, of course, bright colors. And in this particular one, we see a clothes peg. Now, clothes pegs before the proliferation of dryers were actually very common household objects. But instead of being a small little uh, wood object that a housewife would have in her hand, this has become a monument. It almost looks like perhaps, you know, a tower, the Eiffel Tower. And he's enlarged it to become something worth monumentalizing and worth viewing in an urban landscape. So he's taken it out of context and he's blown it up. And by doing that, he's created a very interesting object out of something usually quite mundane. Now, Oldenburg didn't just make things large and brightly colored, he also made things soft. So what he's done is he's taken a violin and a toilet and he's made them into soft objects. So a violin and a toilet are, are functional objects, they're made to be used. But he has changed them to the point where they've become completely useless. You cannot play this violin and you certainly cannot use this toilet, at least I hope you wouldn't even try. Oldenburg creates sculptures where he takes ordinary everyday objects and he makes them grand or he makes them ridiculous. Minimalism is a style in which line color materials are often very simple. In this work you can see Judd has incorporated sort of a stack of metal squares and he's created an interesting rhythm where our eye leads up along the, the pattern and then down again. But it's still a very simple work in itself. And in many ways, minimalism has become an important style in our modern world, especially if you look at architecture of the 20th century, we'll notice minimalistic shape and form is the style that is preferred. In the 21st century, artists really wanted to start being a bit more playful. Anish Kapoor created something called Cloud Gate. It's in Chicago. It's actually lovingly nicknamed The Bean. And it's an amazing work of fused metal that is highly, highly sheened so that viewers in the square can go up and actually look at themselves. But not only do you see yourself as the viewer, you can actually see your whole surroundings. And what's even more fun is you can go inside under the bean and you can get all these varied looks of yourself. Kumi Yamashita plays with something much more ephemeral than metal and that is shadows. So the work on the left looks like two people, a man and a woman, holding up something. We're not quite sure what it is. But really, the man and woman are shadow. They don't actually exist. The only thing that truly exists is the thing that they're holding up, which 
is probably a cutout with light shining on it. And to the right we see children's play blocks that have been put on the wall and then a light has come from the severe right shining across to create a shadow of a woman stepping out of the blocks. Yet as soon as you switch off that light this woman disappears and those blocks almost lose their meaning. So there's a wonderful play on reality and what is there and what's not there and how reality can change depending on different circumstances. What I'd like you to do is on the next page in DC Connect you're going to look at a Google image page on installations. Click around, look at a few different ones to get some idea of what installations are. And usually installations are created for a very specific location and they rely on the wall, the floor, the ceiling in some way to give them meaning. You couldn't just take a work and move it somewhere else randomly and expect it to work. It needs to be in a specific place. Click on the images and explore the wide range of exciting installation sculpture that's available.